Um, um, the Apple tax case, we start with that. In, in 2016, the European Commission made this finding. Um, it assessed a $13 billion penalty, which was basically what it said were unpaid taxes because the Irish tax authority had given these favorable opinions to Apple that essentially amounted to um, improper state aid. Now, what was interesting is that the Intermediate Court in 2020 did reverse that decision and, and said the commission didn't follow um, certain guidelines in setting that fine. But when we looked at the briefing going into this this final um, hearing, it, it did seem like this was going to be the result. So I think this $13 billion verdict against Apple wasn't entirely surprising. And this money has been held in escrow for, for a number of years. So I, I think people sort of saw this, this coming this way. So, I mean, is this just another, I guess, hurdle that Apple and you know, other big tech companies have to deal with from a regulatory standpoint just all over the world here? Yeah, I mean, the, the hurdles are, are certainly stacking up. But I think what's interesting about this is I look at these two decisions as really some 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 of the last ripples from really regulatory actions that began kind of nearly a decade ago. And, and I think now we've certainly moved on in, in both and especially in Europe, but also in the U.S., there, there are increasing hurdles there that the companies are having to face. I mean, especially if you look at Google and, you know, it's sort of locked up in another trial this week with the DOJ over competition concerns. So these these um these challenges really are mounting up around the globe. So put it all together. So I, I guess that's a great point. What's on the docket court wise for uh, big tech in Europe, and then what's on the docket big tech yeah. wise in the U.S. And do you have like a spreadsheet that sort of outlines everything? <laughs> I honestly can't keep track. And also like what the money is associated with all of it. Yeah, yeah, we've got quite a few spreadsheets. I, I do what? have one where I track um, all the ones that are in Europe. And if you look at Europe, what, what's why well, I say that we've moved on from that is because after these these regulations um, or uh, sorry these litigations were started five, six, seven years ago, what the European Commission did is they went back and they rewrote some rules where they said we're going to make it easier to really go after some of these anti-competitive practices that we're seeing. And that's why we have the Digital Markets Act. That's why we now have the Digital Services Act. And we already see under the DMA that there are some probes facing both Apple and Google. Google for sort of similar practices that were at issue here where it was alleged to have abused its dominant position in search to elevate its own products over the products of peers. It's already facing investigation for that. Apple is facing two DMA probes, um, both related to the App Store. And I, I think these ongoing have probably more of an operational risk because they really could go to how these companies are, are currently operating, not just sort of this backwards looking uh, financial penalty thing that we we saw today. And then if you look at the U.S., of course, I think the biggest thing facing Google right now is this um, DOJ lawsuit that, that is going to trial this week based on its ad stack. Um, so, so I, I think that could have some really profound ramifications um, for the company, um, not just in terms of financial penalty, but really behavioral remedies, which is, I think, moving forward, what, what could be the most frightening thing for a lot of these companies. Tamlin, is, is the UK view of big tech different than the EU? And the reason I ask is now that obviously the, the UK is out of the EU. Do they right. look at tech any differently than the European Union? Maybe there's some slight variations where they may be trend slightly more toward the U.S., although I say that, but the U.S. now is really fairly aggressive in their stance on, on big tech. But the EU, um, U.K. doesn't really quite have the competition rules, but they also are saying that we're going to reevaluate how some of these um, rules are going to be applied against these big tech firms. So I think it, it's, it's difficult to find any real safe haven in terms of a regulatory standpoint for these big tech companies, um, whether it's EU, UK, or even increasingly the U.S. How do you handicap all of this within, say, valuations or how you model the stock? I, I, I honestly think a lot of investors ha have a little bit of regula regulation fatigue when it comes to this. Th this is <laughs> by no means a new story, especially if you look at, at how the EU has been going after um, these, these dominant um, firms for over a decade now. And I, I can't say when you look at them, you can see really a loosening of their um, grip on the markets here. So I, I do think in many ways that, that investors are sort of shrugging off these mm -hmm. actions. Um, and, and I think, you know, especially when you look at the the, the increasing trials that yeah. we're having, that the, we actually could see some, some huge um, sort of landmark um, litigations coming out. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on, yeah. even though we've been seeing it for, for years and years and years.